around my story. Let me be honest with you guys. I'm not a fan of first dates. I've only had a couple of good first dates. Others are plain disasters. However, from time to time, I like to get on Tinder and swipe between pictures. Tinder dates always turn into funny stories. Sometimes even spooky ones. My guy best friend Ryan and I decided to go on a few Tinder dates just for the fun of it. Before we went out, we would always agree on a safe word. And that word was hot dog. A text saying, hey, can you pick up some hot dogs on the way? Or something along those lines basically meant, can you call me and pretend there's an emergency so I can get out of this situation without being rude? We had a lot of safe words meaning different things and had an unspoken rule that every time we were on a date, we would let the other person know. I met this guy called Brandon on the application. We had a few good chats and decided to go out for brunch. I called Ryan and I let him know that I'll be having brunch with this Brandon guy. I'm not a supermodel, but I'm a bit too picky when it comes to first date outfits. I dived into my closet and decided to wear a bright pink off-shoulders blouse and a tiny little white skirt. And of course, my signature mermaid hue high heels. Brandon texted me saying he knows of a nice Italian restaurant. Despite the fact that we were going out for brunch, I somehow agreed to Italian. The guy comes to pick me up for our brunch date. He looks nice with lots of black on. He says he needs to make a stop along the way. I couldn't really seem to disagree. I mean, he clearly forgot to buy me flowers. So I say it's fine and he can make a stop along the way. He pulls up to a gravesite and I see people and I'm like, okay, maybe he's picking something up from someone or maybe he works here and needs to do something. What was really going through my mind though is what the heck is he doing and why is he bringing me to a gravesite on a first date? I just waited in the car, especially since there's morning people nearby and I'm wearing a bright pink outfit. He gets out of the car and opens up the passenger side door. I tell him something along the lines of, I don't want to draw attention to myself and I'll just wait here. And he says something along the lines of, don't worry, you look great. They will love you. Despite my pink outfit and my high heels, Brandon was very well built. He was very tall and had broad shoulders. One could easily tell that he is into martial arts. So I wasn't very worried about my safety. However, I was really worried about his mental health. I'm not even kidding. I was so very curious about what on earth we're redoing there at 10 a.m. on a first date. And who is they? As in, they love you. Okay, so the next part is a bit hard to define whether it was creepy, surreal, or a prank show. It was his mother's funeral. I stood next to a group of weeping people watching as my date's mother was lowered into the ground. Needless to say, it was really, really awkward, especially since he kept trying to hold my hand and nuzzle me for comfort. It's a first date for God's sake. I waited for the service to be over, as I didn't want to be rude to the grieving people or to the dead woman. And then I texted Ryan, hot dog. So Ryan called me and pretended to be my landlord and told me that my apartment was flooded. I quickly apologized to Brandon and called an Uber. While I was waiting for my Uber to arrive, Brandon kept on holding my hand and literally begging me to stay a little bit longer. He also said we could still go out for brunch but I politely said we could reschedule for another time. I think his cousins or something were standing too close. He told them that we've been dating for a few weeks and they should talk me into staying. 
I was so glad that my Uber finally arrived. I hopped inside the car like a freaking ninja. I called Brian and asked him to come over. We stayed together and honestly, I've never laughed as much as Ryan made me laugh that night. And guess what? Ryan and I realized we were actually in love a few weeks later. We gave up online dating and we've been together ever since. I don't really like Indian movies because the actors are always overreacting and the movies are not logical at all. But this is just my personal opinion. However, I've discovered that there are stories stranger than Indian movies. Let me give you a real life example. I'll tell you a story about a young woman named Samantha. Samantha was a beautiful girl with blonde hair and green eyes. She lived with her grandmother after her parents died in a horrible car accident. The whole country read about it. She had many friends, and all the neighbors liked her. They considered her the most beautiful girl in town. Many had proposed to her, but she didn't care much for them. One day, Samantha was walking alone down the street after visiting one of her friends. Suddenly, she had an eerie feeling that someone was following her. She began running and crying for help. Her follower began running and stopped her. He was an ugly man, pointing a knife in her direction. He asked her to hand over her purse. She threw it at him and made a run for it. The man said wait and made to stop her, but another man appeared out of nowhere and punched the thief, who fell unconscious. The brave and good Samaritan picked up Samantha's purse and handed it to her. He was very handsome, with green eyes, soft hair, and an amazing smile. He escorted her back home, and she felt that he was her knight in shining armor. She went inside and hugged her grandmother tight, who was a little surprised but smiled. Samantha was so happy that she gently pulled her grandmother to her feet, and they whirled around and danced playfully. The very next day, she was surprised when she answered the doorbell. Steve, the tall, handsome man, was standing there, holding flowers. He proposed to her, and she said yes. Thus began their love story. Then one day, Samantha was standing in the kitchen preparing dinner. Steve and her grandmother were out, but they were supposed to be back soon. Samantha had everything ready, and she set the table. The house door opened, and Steve walked in. Samantha went to greet him, but she felt dizzy and fainted. Steve quickly took her to the hospital. The doctor congratulated Steve, saying that he was going to be a father. Steve was ecstatic, but Samantha was not. Instead, she was shocked and nervous. She said that she was too young to have kids, that she wasn't ready to be a mother. Steve was taken aback and said, But why? Don't you want him? Things were different from that point on. Samantha tried to get an abortion several times, but Steve was always stopping her. She couldn't accept it. She blamed Steve, but Steve couldn't understand her. In her seventh month of pregnancy, Samantha was with her grandmother at the supermarket when she saw a small boy run onto the road. Fearing he might get run over by a car, Samantha quickly pulled the boy off the road to safety. The boy's mother saw what happened and thanked Samantha, feeling so grateful and relieved. Samantha was crying at the moment and replied, No need to thank me. I'm going to be a mother like you soon. For the first time, she was beginning to feel real affection for the baby. Forgive me, she silently thought to herself. She tried to contact Steve many times to tell him that she had finally accepted. She was ready to become a mother, but he never responded. Finally, the day had come. Samantha went to the hospital to give birth. After the surgery, she was very tired. Nevertheless, when she woke up, she immediately asked for the baby. Her grandmother handed her the child. It was a daughter, and she was so beautiful. The nurse tried to take the baby out of her arms, but Samantha refused wanting to hold her for as long as she could. The next day, Samantha heard a big commotion, and she had a feeling of dread that something bad had just happened. It was confirmed when she saw her grandmother's face. She asked what had happened, and her grandmother told her that a child was missing and had apparently been kidnapped. Samantha's pale face slowly pleaded, Please don't tell me that it was my daughter. When her grandmother nodded, Samantha broke down and began crying and wailing in pain, the nurses tried to calm her down, and when she did, her grandmother came over to her and handed her a note. It had been found in her missing daughter's hospital crib. It was in Steve's handwriting. It simply said, If you don't want her, I do. Then Samantha fainted. 
For many years, she tried finding her baby, but couldn't. Steve and her daughter had vanished into thin air. She felt as if time had stopped for her, but Steve didn't feel that way. He raised their daughter into a beautiful young woman. He named her Margot. Whenever Margot asked about her mother, Steve would always tell her that her mother was dead. But he often told her stories about her mother and how much he had loved her. Margot's intuition, however, told her that her father wasn't being completely honest with her and that he was hiding some big dark secret. One day, Steve fell ill unexpectedly. He called Margot to him and told her that he was very sick and felt that he was going to die soon. He said that he wanted to reveal a secret that he had long kept from her, that her mother was actually alive and that her name was Samantha. He told her that he had kidnapped her from the hospital at birth because her mother did not want a child. He regretted it and asked Margot to forgive him. He gave her Samantha's address and soon after, he died. After his death, Margot decided to go looking for her mother. I am Margot and I am now standing at my mother's address. At her front door, I cannot predict my mother's reaction when she answers the door and I introduce myself as her daughter, but I'm going to hug her and tell her that I've missed her for so long.